Hello and welcome, I'm your Code McKean. So Steam has been making a bunch of changes lately. First they updated some rules around demos, then they updated some rules around graphical assets. After that they did a quick update to user reviews, then they updated some very important rules on written descriptions, and just recently they updated those with a bunch more things. If you're a dev, you definitely need to know about all of these. Steam is super important for indie devs, so I highly advise you to keep up to date with Steam's rules and the best practices. By the way, I covered all of these in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest news and any interesting game dev articles that I come across. For example, a really interesting article on how game development is not a lottery. On this one, I talked about the awesome game UI database. I wrote about a post from dev that said that they kept just 42%. Also a fun one where a co-pilot is leaking API keys. And at the end, I also always include any interesting videos that I see. So if you want to stay up to date with game dev news or any interesting articles that I come across, then check the link in the description to sign up for a very easy to read weekly newsletter. So starting over here with the great Steam demo update of 24, the goal is for making demos even more powerful and flexible as a marketing tool. The main thing is how demos now behave better in the Steam library. So normally demos are simply you go onto the store page and you see over here a button for the demo. Whereas now in this update, demos can now have a separate store page. So demos can have their own standard Steam pages, players can actually write reviews for demos and download them, and the whole thing is tightly connected to the actual game page. They mentioned here how the store page mostly does not impact visibility, and the mostly over here simply has to do with the fact of potentially receiving negative reviews. If your demo ends up on a negative score, then it might impact visibility. But at the same time, if your demo gets negative reviews, that's actually a good thing because it's actually telling you, oh, okay, you definitely need to polish things quite a bit more before going on to the full release. And like it says here, of course, the flip side can be true. So if players are loving your demo, that positive signal may boost interest and actually lead more people to your actual game. So in this example, this demo, people seem to really love it. It's already got 250 reviews on this demo, 98% positive. And looking over here on CMDB, we can see for this game, it actually got a pretty big boost around this time. So roughly it seems around the time that Valve changed these Steam demo rules. Then demos also now appear more in the store page. So if you go onto the main Steam page, and if you scroll down, there's now a tab for trending free. And over here, you can see a whole bunch of demos. Another really interesting one is over here, which is wishlisters are now notified when you launch your demo. So you can start gathering wishlists before having a demo available, then when you publish your demo, it is hopefully going to be much easier to get people to actually try your demo, and again, give you tons of feedback so the final game can be really awesome. So in general, this change is really interesting. The Steam Next Fest happening, the next one which is going to be in October, it is going to be quite interesting to see how these new rules affect Next Fest, gathering wishlists, demos, and so on. The second bit of news is that Steam is now supporting larger store graphical assets. Essentially, they are basically updating the size requirements to about 2x the previous templates, so all of these capsules, which are those little images that show up, all of those now need to be 2x bigger. Now, thankfully, it does say that previous sizes are still supporting, at least until November. So that's great, you don't need to immediately go ahead and change everything. But if your game is launching after November, after November 1st, if so, they won't fully switch the new templates and no longer accept uploads of these smaller dimensions. This whole thing is mainly these assets allow us to better serve customers on high-res monitors and devices, including the Steam Deck OLED. So it's a nice change for players. They can see some more high-res artwork. But for developers, especially developers like me with no artistic skill, for me, making the graphical assets for all my games is always a super annoying thing. I always really dislike that part of the process. So for me, it's going to be quite annoying to have to come up with double the resolution for all of this. But again, hopefully, better assets for players. Also pretty fun, which is how over here on the frequently asked questions, they have this one. Why are banners referred to as captions on Steam? It's an interesting one, so great question. We asked ourselves the same thing and looked into it with the hopes of digging up an inspiring backstory from Steam lore. Alas, it's simply that all those years ago, when we first started selling games on Steam, we had to invent and name a bunch of things in a hurry, and someone on the team said capsule, and we all must have replied good enough, and now it's embedded onto our code for all time. I have to say, that is definitely a very strange name. When I first put my first game on Steam, I was definitely confused by the terminology. I have no idea how a capsule refers to some kind of image for a game, and apparently they themselves don't know either. So yeah, that's a mystery, which is apparently going to remain a mystery for a very long time. Then the next update is over here, the update user reviews, so the new homefulness system. So with today's Steam update, we are ready for public testing a new system that changes the way Steam sorts user reviews on store pages with the goal of prioritizing reviews that can best help players make a purchase decision about a game. This new helpfulness system is now enabled by default and can easily be toggled within the user review settings for each game. So the idea being to surface more helpful reviews whilst not surfacing those that are really just funny memes and jokes. So if you go onto a game page and you scroll down onto the reviews, then over here click on display. Here there's a checkbox for use the new helpfulness system. So this only applies to summary and most summary. And with that enabled, most of these reviews should hopefully have quite a bit of detail as opposed to being really just jokes or ASCII art. So for example, if you're at Zibble and scroll down, and of course, here's a funny one, the factory must grow. This game is a trap for software engineers. 
So funny reviews and actually applicable to the game, but they don't really tell too much to someone actually trying to buy the game. Then here is the most important update of all, so changes coming to the store page written descriptions. These new rules will take effect in early September. And these rules, these apply to the about section of the game, the short description, special announcement and the award section. And here are the rules, very important, so no links to other websites. So you cannot link to anything else, including social media pages. So one thing that some people were quite annoyed about this is how now you cannot link to an external Discord server. That is how many people handle their community and now that is not really a possibility. Technically you can still include it over here on these social links on the side, but really nobody ever checks these links so these are really not going to be clicked at all. Then the other rule is no embedded imagery that mimics Steam Store UI or buttons. So you can no longer have a GIF that essentially shows the mouse going up to the add to wishlist and clicking on that. You can't really have that. That was something that a lot of people use and myself included because I'm guessing that it does work. And then the other rule is no images, links or widgets pointing to other games on Steam. So this one is really important. I think this is really the main thing that brought upon these rule changes is how there were some developers like let's say Playway who published tons and tons of games and if you went to one of their game store pages it was basically just littered with links to other games. So doing that is now no longer possible, you cannot do that. Although they did make some updates to that which I'll cover in a bit but anyways over here they talk about the background. So why did they do this? Why did they do these changes? So they talk about how they don't like the trend of store pages linking to other store pages. So again, having a game that links to some completely other, completely different game, having a page of eight other games before you even get the description, that can definitely become quite annoying. So once again, it's one of those things how, in theory, if everybody used it correctly, literally just one link, it would probably not be a problem, they wouldn't change this. But of course, since someone always has to abuse the systems, that is why they eventually change these rules. Then their second reason is we saw game developers releasing prologue games on Steam. That can also add to a bunch of confusion for some players. You've got the actual game and then you got a prologue. Now thankfully for this one, when combined with the previous changes on demos, the way that demos nowadays, now they do have an actual store page. With that, I feel those are going to essentially take the role that prologues used to have. And then over here, we had an outstanding list of improvements we wanted to make for demos since they become a key part of events since next fest. So honestly, this one thing that I really like about Steam is how they're constantly trying to improve everything that they do. It would be very easy for Valve to basically just sit at home, do absolutely nothing, just have a company with literally just one employee just cashing in billions of dollars. So it's nice that they still try to constantly improve their platform, even though they're very much far away at the top. So that's nice, but these rules, some people found them a bit too limiting, a bit too restrictive. So because of that, they actually talked to a bunch of developers on Gamescom. And because of that, they made another update. This one adding new options for featuring related to content on your Steam page. And the first one being how you can now highlight related games that you make. So instead of having to place each game link directly under the description, Instead of that, they just exist in a proper widget at the bottom of the page. So if you have a bunch of games on Steam, definitely go ahead and enable this right now. I've already enabled it for my own game, so here is Inky Gardens, and if I scroll down, yep, here's the one. So more from Endless Loop Studios, so these are my other games. So this is the little widget that you can enable, you can add all of these. So if you previously had links on your description, now go ahead and enable this. Also, by the way, this one has a really nice follow button here, which is yet another thing, if you haven't yet set this up, if you don't yet have your own developer page, if you don't have this set up, definitely go ahead and set it up. Over here, it shows a list of all your games. You can show all of them. And importantly, people can follow you. And then when you publish another game, these people will be notified. So by changes, yep, you can select this little widget to select individual games. Then you can also select which game you want to show, which sorting order, and so on. Alternatively, you can pick developer, publisher, and franchise. So if you have a different developer and publisher under your game, you can either select to highlight developer or publisher games or alternatively franchise, if you're working as part of a franchise. Then you can sort them in any way you want, you can force whatever feature you want. And for the second update, you can now feature a DLC item. So you can have some kind of list of DLC and select one of them, and it won't show up at the top, it will show up a little bit bigger with a nice little label. So over here in my game Hyper Knights, which I did make a little bit of DLC, and if over here I did mark this one as recommended. So it shows up at the top, it's a little bit more visible and has that nice little tag. So once again, if you do have some DLC for any of your games, definitely go ahead and enable this right now. And over here on the frequent last questions, they also mention, what if I don't have any other games on my developer homepage? If so, you can still use the widget to let players follow your developer or publisher. It will display a little differently if there are a few or no other games to show. So technically, if you only have a single game on Steam, definitely go ahead and enable this. Once again, having people being able to follow your developer page, that can help you quite a lot when you publish your next game. So yep, these are the recent updates. They've definitely been quite busy for these past few months. Like I said, I covered all these news in my Game Dev Report newsletter. So sign up so you don't miss any future news and you see any interesting articles and videos that I come across. And speaking of Steam rules and how to get the best out of Steam, if you want to learn Steam game marketing, check out all the videos that I made with Chris. A lot of videos, very in-depth, talking about pretty much everything you need to know about Steam game marketing. 
Chris is a marketing expert. I learned a lot of my own marketing knowledge from him. And if you want a more detailed step-by-step -step guide, then check out his wishlist and visibility masterclass. Check it out through the links in the description. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.